a lot of product, whatever. Um, it gives up a lot as well. And then some people are born with hair with the cuticle is closed. Now you can definitely rub up the hair, beat up, the sh beat up your straw, <laughs> have holes in it, and you can increase your porosity, but that's not what you're born with. That's just hair not well taken care of. Um, and porosity is easy to spot. It, it's as simple as is it shiny and how silky is it. Now sometimes you can have really, really high porosity, low porosity in shiny hair. It can be very kinky, so there's a lot to look at there. But you can simplify that by shine. People with sandy hair, um, that's just what you're born with. That sandy hair is because that hair is more transparent. It, it can take on color easily. Um, it responds to chemicals very quickly. Where well, you can take up, for example, like Asian hair. It's very difficult for Asians to achieve a yellow, gold, blonde. They typically don't get past that orangey, ready copper tone. You'll see that with a lot of us. We kind of stop at that copper kind of colored hair. Um, the reason for them is because it's difficult for chemicals and things to pass through the cuticle of their hair. Where a lot of people are more of uh, African descent, it's a lot easier for chemicals and, and particles and conditioners to pass through our hair. And that's where you see, um, we would actually, to me, I would think, and, and Travis, you chime in here, but I would think that a protein treatment on people with really porous hair would be quite terrible because the hair is already so thin and soft and easily, and it's more fragile that you'd be causing more damage than anything else. Um, no. It's okay. She was asking if, um, she said a lot of times people say you should, if your hair is just so up and you should have a less protein in your hair. No. Well, I heard your answer, and it was it was correct. That's the porosity, and that's just the ability to absorb moisture. That's how that is. And again, it's, if your cuticles are wide open, it absorbs more moisture. That's 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 what it is. You have three layers. See, one hair strand has actually three layers. It has a cuticle that we were speaking of earlier. Um, the ideal cuticle is you try to get it as smooth as possible so it can reflect light. And when it reflects light, it just shines. So you want to get it sealed, and you also want to get it sealed so it can protect the cortex. The cortex is where everything happens. That's where your protein lives. That's where your melanin lives. That's where everything lives. And melanin is just your hair color. That's where everything lives inside the cortex. The cuticle protects that. And they're like roof shingles. It's like your roof shingles on your home protecting this, everything inside your home. So that's, that's what it's, it's doing. And the third layer is the medulla, which is like really the innermost layer of your hair. Um, it's really small. It's not much that goes on in there. But the cortex is where everything happens. And the cuticle is actually transparent. So when you see your hair color, you're actually looking inside of your hair strand. The outer layer is actually transparent, and you're seeing the, the melanin inside your, your hair is what you're seeing when you look at your, your hair color. So, gray is absent of melanin. It's, it's, it's zero. <laughs> it's, it's what happens when we get a little older, and, and it's just the lack of melanin. That's what you see. Yes, ma'am? Um, I have a question. Um, I have a question about 